Hi, in this video, I want to show you how to create a Final Cut camera clone using SwiftUI. If you don't know what Final Cut camera is all about, it's an iPhone app for recording videos. So in this video, we are not going to make a fully functional Final Cut camera clone, but I'll show you how to design the UI. Then I will also show you how to get access to the iOS devices camera using the SwiftUI video SDK from Stream. From the SDK, you can also add a recording feature. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Therefore, our aim in this project is to show you how to design the UI and how to get access to the device's camera using the Streams Video SDK for iOS. Let's run the final project in Xcode so that you understand what we are going to build in this video. So this is what we want to build in this video. We have a simple and clean UI and also access to the iPhone camera. Let's get started. Let's make a new file in Xcode and call it Final Cut Camera. Then we will save it to a location. In our newly created SwiftUI project, we need access to the iPhone camera and also access to the device's microphone. So we need to set two privacies, one for camera and one for microphone. Let's select the root folder of the project and go to the info tab. If I hover on any of these keys, you can see there is a plus icon. Let's Click that and go to the privacy section to add a new privacy for camera and microphone. First, we select camera usage description. Once you do that, we can set a value, but we can leave it empty to get a default string from the system when we launch the app for the first time. So let's leave it empty. Let's add another one for microphone. Then we leave the value field empty as well. To provide access to the device's camera, we are going to use stream video. Using the Streams Video SDK, you can easily build video calling, audio room, and live streaming applications for iOS using SwiftUI. In this video, we don't need any of these use cases. All we need is to use the device camera. And using the SDK, it is easy to access the device's camera. So let's install it by going to File and click Add Package Dependencies. Then in the search on the top right, I'm going to paste this URL. I will add this link to the description of the video. So if you want to add in-app audio room, live streaming, and video calling to your iOS or SwiftUI app, you can visit the repo on GitHub and get started. So let's click Add Package and wait for some time. The video SDK has three components. We have Stream Video, Stream Video SwiftUI, and Stream Video UI Kit. In our case, we don't need the UI Kit version, so let's set this to none. So you can see here under package dependencies we have stream video which consists of the core video sdk and also reusable SwiftUI components for building video calling applications then we have stream web rtc which helps to establish a particular call we have these dependencies but we are not going to use them first we create a swift file called zoom view so let's select the option new file from template and leave the option as SwiftUI view and click next Let's call this zoom view. Let's look at what the zoom view looks like. So this is the zoom view we want to create in this file. Let's embed the text in an H stack. Then inside the H stack, we will add an image. Let's use dark mode in the preview. Inside this H stack, we will add another H stack here and add this content. Then over here, we are going to put a spacer. Then with the inner edge stack, we will add the following styles. So we set the font, then we pad the edges with different values. Then finally, we add a background. The last thing to do in this file is to add another image here. To ensure this one, the middle one, and the one on the right have the same spaces, we will add another spacer here. So this is everything we have for the zoom view. Let's go to the next by adding another file. We will call this top view. Let's also look at how the top view looks like. So this is our top view. We have a horizontal container containing two items. So let's add them in this file. First, we will set the color scheme to dark. Then we embed this in a VStack. Inside the VStack, we will also have an H stack and replace it with this content. 
so we have an image text and also a background next let's embed this h stack into another h stack and add a v stack here before the v stack we will add a spacer and also align the content to top you can now see the content on the left and the one on the right are aligned to the top in our third file we are going to make a recording timer view so let's call it recording timer view let's modify the text here and use swift to edit for the style we will set it as timer then we will add the following styles when the timer is changing from a single value to a double value for example you will see the ui shaking so to prevent that we use monospace digit we also add a pattern and a background and set content transition to interpolate so we have a nice transition when the numbers are changing so this is all the ui we need we don't need a content view so we can select it and delete it and go to the entry point of the app so here we are going to set up the video sdk in order to get access to the camera instead of presenting content view let's remove that we will come back and set up the video sdk in this file later but now let's create another file called floating participant view to use the video sdk we have two participants the local participant and remote participant in this video we need only the local participant the local participant is called floating participant so we'll add a new file and call it floating participant view then let's replace everything with this content so we import stream video and stream video swift ui that is the dependencies over here then we define the following properties and display a call participant using the sdk's video renderer view the sdk has two views for rendering video calling uis we have the video renderer view with the video renderer view you don't get any call controls there is also a call container view which shows call controls like controls for starting a call ending a call and changing the camera or microphone so in this example we need only the video renderer view so that we render the device camera without any call controls next we need another view for displaying both the remote participant and the local participant so let's add another file and call it participants view i'm going to remove everything here and replace it with this content again we import stream video and stream video swift ui and inside the participant view struct we add these properties first we create a call so if a particular call has a participant we display that using a scroll view otherwise we show a dark screen for a step-by-step -step guide on the video participants you can check a link in the description of the video to learn more lastly we need to set up the video sdk in the entry point of the app so over here we still need to import stream video and stream video swift ui then over here i'm going to add the following properties first we should create an instance of stream video using api key and token over here we are using a hard-coded token for demonstration purpose for your production app you will need a stream account i will add a link to the description of the video the hard-coded token also has expiration so if you download the project from github and run it you may get a blank screen so anytime you download the project from github you should go to the stream website there is this video calling tutorial so if i scroll down there is a code snippet here so this is the same hard-coded token we are using in this video i will also add a link to this tutorial in the description of the video in order to access the video sdk we need a valid user inside the init we create a user object with id name and avatar then we create an instance of stream video and initialize it with the api key user and token then over here we initialize the call object and set the type as default so this is for normal video calling you can also change it to live stream audio room you can also create your own call type in window group we will embed everything in a navigation stack inside the navigation stack we will also add a z stack let's add the following inside the z stack so when a call is created we display the video participants 
and once the call creation is in progress, we display the text loading. Then over here, we use the call.join method to get real-time transport for audio and video. So after the on appear modifier, we are going to add a VStack to bring all the UIs we designed earlier. So inside the VStack, let's add the following, the top view, the spacer, and the zoom view. So we have the top view here and the zoom view. We will also add another HStack containing this content. So here we are adding this image with the name IMG. Let's go to the assets folder and add it. Next, we have a button with these state properties, which allows users to record video. You can see here we have this state variable is recording. So that is using the recording feature from the SDK. So we need to add a recording function from the SDK. Also, we display these SF symbols. Next, we will add two bar items to the content inside the navigation stack. So over here, I'm going to add a two bar. So that has the following two bar items. Lastly, we are going to add the recording functions. So we have a function for starting recording and also another function for stopping recording. And finally, we need another function for tracking the participant's visibility. So this is everything we need to do to set up the video SDK. You can download the final project from GitHub and test it yourself. So we can now go ahead and click run to run the app.